Welcome to the Rebel Love Show. We are a once a week broadcast from Manchester, New Hampshire, where we are pro pot, pro gun, and pro coffee. We are syndicated on Voluntary Virtues, J Rev Radio, and of course, you know, go download us on iTunes and Stitcher. Uh, I am Rob Mathias. And I'm Shire Dude. And uh, Joel's skipping this one. Uh, he can make it. But we do have a great guest today, the one and only uh, Lauren Rumpler, a.k.a. Objectivist Girl. Hi, guys. How's it going? It's oh, been, it's so good. <laughs> it's been a long time coming for you to be on this show. I know. It's been, the anticipation's been building. I know. My audience has just been like, when are you going to get... I mean, you keep talking about these media buddies of yours, and, and they heard you on um, Free Talk Live with me, and they were just so excited about you, Rob, and... Um, and uh, I know everybody loves Shire do videos because he likes to make me the star. So, of course, I have to post them up. So it's awesome. It was fun being on uh, Free Talk Life. Three hours of secession talk. Oh, my God. Right? Could yeah. you believe we went for three hours talking on about secession? On one subject. I've never. I've listened to a lot of uh, Free Talk Live, and rarely do they stay on one topic the I've entire never, three hours. I never heard an episode where they've stayed on Yeah, that's topic that's almost time. never happened on Free Talk Live, to my knowledge. I mean, I've, I used to listen to it all the time. And well, yeah, you can just go through the MP3 archives of that show, and you'll see they bounce all around because they, like, they'll put the topics yeah. you know, on each episode. And they'll bounce around everywhere, especially since every caller can call in and bring up whatever they want. Yeah, but every caller that called in was on the same subject. That's it was crazy. still on secession. It was still on the New Hampshire independence and I mean, Scottish it was independence. A, it was a fever. I mean, it was in the air. I mean, with Scotland, I mean, God, but did they really just disappoint on that one? Yeah. Mm. Well, you know really what? They, they, set the, they set the, prece- uh, the precedent that, uh, you know, a Western power can, you know, they can break apart and have a vote. And it's not, there's not going to be violence over people wanting to leave. So... They did that. You, you know, know Rob, they inspired me. I have a question for you. Shoot. Why is your mic so much cooler than mine? <laughs> I'm just that much badass. <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, don't you feel stiff, Shire Dude? I mean, we're over here with these big, huge mics in front of our beautiful faces. And there's there's Rob with his, you know, cool mic. I want a cool mic. How, where do I get one? Uh, I bought this. This was a used one I bought at Guitar Center down in Nashua. Oh. Yeah. Well, heck yeah. I, like, they had a used one, so I went down there, and it was gold. I'm like, sold. I'm like, uh, I'll get it. It, it, it like, <laughs> worked perfectly, so it, it Wait, very much they fits. were selling it for gold? No, I wish. No, oh. it, it's gold-colored. Oh, well, yeah, it's It goes really with the look. cute. I mean, I mean, you know, the gold and black, I mean, that's the way to go. There you go. And you fastened your shiny badge on the front there, too. Oh, yeah, I, I, I got Yeah, I got, I got a... God, half half the stuff that's in this room is Davi Barker inspired. Come on. Now. Oh yeah. I mean, come, uh, we're not going to do the jingle, by the way. <laughs> no, I want to hear the jingle. He, he do the to, jingle. He needs to pay us to sing his jingle. Yeah, he needs to pay us Bitcoin to yeah. sing the jingle. We we have it uh, down, okay. Pat. All right. Um. And anyways, we got we got backtracked for a second. Announcements. We have announcements. Yeah. Um. All right. Uh, Keenvention's coming up. All of us are involved in Keenvention. All of us. Woo-hoo! All of Hosting right. the ladies panel. Yeah. What, what what is a ladies panel? I don't know. They asked me to. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a panel where no men are allowed. And oh. being the sexist of the Free State Project, you know, with my love of women and my hatred of men. I mean, I'm the man hater in this group, aren't I? Uh, you've been accused of that before I have. on the I internet. Mean, yeah, I mean, they really think that I'm actually sexist, which is really funny because I went to an all-girls school and got put in my locker all day by women. I mean, how could I love women more than men at this point? It's impossible. I've never heard you say anything anti-man. Uh, but I yeah, I know. My, I, I'll be perfectly honest, the internet. I really have... Uh, no, I take it back. I have watched a couple of your videos, but for the most part, I know you from being you. I don't really know you. I don't listen to. Well, I'm, I'm assuming you don't really listen to what we do. Um. Yeah, that that's <laughs> I, I'm calling you out, Rob, and vice versa. Rob, Rob, I love you so much. I really do, and I love you too, Shire Dave. But like, I well, really, what, I don't have time. Yeah, that's the thing. When you're here, like once you get here, you. I, you don't really pay attention to other Liberty God, media. You do not have time for anything. No, when you, you get don't. Here. I Your mean, if you have time. Your schedule gets filled up with everything. Yeah, if you have time for things when you're here, you're not doing enough things. Yeah, you're not doing it right. Yeah. yeah. Though my favorite episode. Oh God, my, yeah, Maybe you should turn your phone he, off. Yeah, he's calling me. So. Wh- who's he? Um, oh, that's right. We're not going to talk about it. It's someone that. she doesn't have time well, for. Well, I mean, no, no. I mean, I, I don't mind mentioning Matthew. I mean, um, my 
five-year relationship that I dropped to move out here to New Hampshire. Oh, wow. So, yeah. I mean, like. That's 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 why they call it the Divorce State Project, Well, no. Right? I mean, I still really care about him. It's not like that. Um, we didn't break up. We just, like, I mean, it was the whole reason for doing polyamory was so that we could stay together. So, I mean. I mean, I guess you could say we're still kind of together, but I mean, we don't really. Yeah, there are definitely complications. That it's long it's distance, a lot it's of long distance. It's kind of hard being to do. so far. It yeah. is, but I mean, you know, we've had we have five years of backing, so it's not really that big of a deal. So, anyways, convention back. Oh yeah, <laughs> back convention. Back. <laughs> so I get a phone call. And we dropped the whole topic. <laughs> yeah. So you're doing a, a panel on women. Uh, no, 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 no. Women are the only ones allowed on the panel because my panel is sexist like me. And <laughs> uh, who's on and, the panel with you? Um, so Laura Condon, um, I'm doing a vaccination panel. And so Laura Condon is an anti-vaxxer and she's going to be on my panel. Um, so is Laurel Hawthorne, uh, who you finally met the other night in person. And yeah, it was a long... Yeah, yeah. It was, I was kind of surprised it took me that long in my my uh, the path I've been w- wandering around in New yeah. Hampshire until I met her. Yeah, and the latest is actually Renee. Really, Ian's, oh, Ian's, Ian's girlfriend. Ah. Is oh wait, wait, on we just panel. we just what well, everyone knows that. So. Well, yeah, no, everybody knows that. Yeah, I mean, if you don't know that, then you should but probably th- move to the Shire and actually, like, you know, if you didn't know it already, get it's in small the loop. Loop. It's small circles. Get here. in the loop, guys. So. It's about vaccinations. That seems like a is that is that a big su- subject in the liberty movement? Um, no, but I want to make it a big subject. The problem is, is that um, where, no, where, go ahead. And nobody listens to me about it, so it's like. Where do you stand on vaccination? I don't think you want to know. I'm going to spend the rest of the show <laughs> defending it. That, that's a black hole topic for it, you. Oh, it, no, oh, that's right. You're you're, you're kind of stated, so you you defend some states. If you want to no, hear no, the rum actually, talk about vaccinations, actually, I'm, I'm yeah, in, you want to hear the, the uh, Lauren talk about how you should, you know, everyone needs to be forcibly vaccinated. No, with. actually, I'm anti-vax. <laughs> I'm oh, you're anti- oh, you're com- defending. No, I, I don't even think I don't think we should be forced. I don't even think they should be available. I mean, if you want to make them available, that's fine. But like. I, I wouldn't use them. You know, do you think okay. the state should not be producing them? Is that what it is? Uh, no, I just don't think anybody should be t- producing them. They're mm. just not safe. Mm. I mean, they're horrible things. I'm not against the idea of vaccinations. I'm just against the idea that someone can force me to take and, one. And anyone, most people, I mean, I don't think I've met anybody in this community that actually believes in forced vaccination. Which, I mean, those people That's are what I'm insane. thinking this is about. If, if everyone's against the idea of forcing people, then I don't... No, but it's I'm about down. whether vaccinations are safe or not. Because honestly, we have a lot of kids coming out of the Free State Project, and I really want to like care for them. Right. And like, I don't, I don't, I don't want parents injecting horrible substances into their children's bodies without their consent. We got to pop out as many Liberty babies as we can. Got to sure spread the seed of uh, Liberty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is it? I um, think if you have fifteen kids, Carla should come to your house and like pin a medal on you. <laughs> yeah, fifteen signers. Yeah, <laughs> Carla, are you sure? Yeah, yeah, Carla G. Okay. Oh, Carla G or Carla M. Both of them. I both like, of them at yeah, the same time. They should both come there and each have their own medals. Uh, maybe we should do Chris Lopez. Oh yeah, well, CeeLo. All three it, of them. CeeLo. CeeLo's awesome. <laughs> she is super cool. Yeah. She's, She's great. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyways, convention. Uh, I will be doing a panel on. Uh, um, well, hopefully one that hasn't been announced yet, which I'm hoping for the best. Anyways, uh, direct action panel I'm gonna be on. I know Garrett's doing that. I don't know who else is on that panel. I probably should, but I don't. But this yeah, why don't you get on top of your own panel? <laughs> oh, it's not my panel. I'm being I'm, the, I'm on the panel list, uh, but I'm not got running asked to it. Be on a panel. I got to be asked to be on that panel. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And then what are you doing? I was asked to be on the the new movers panel. There you go. And that's yeah. that's like day one actually. You are there. an epic new mover. <laughs> There's not that many people that trailblaze in here. Like you know, the, you came here as your first night. So I mean. Yeah, yeah it was, I was. I, I can't. I can't say that's not yeah, a I bad mean, this, move. This show, this Rebel Love show, is definitely a bunch of trailblazers. I mean, <laughs> like we're like the big media people that are really making it happen. The big activists and everything out here. So. S- speaking of activism, uh, we did some uh, outreach last week. Oh my god, that was so much fun! I was so happy to actually get to do some activism with you, and it was really sad that nobody else showed up besides us. But like. Well, it was awesome. And honestly, like with that, with what we did, you don't need that many people. Um, what we well, what we did, we hit a we had a farmer stand in uh, Manchester. It's a very local thing. So, 
like the whole idea of New Hampshire independence is we're trying to build the culture in New Hampshire because obviously free staters are down where most anyways are, I would assume. But, uh, you know, we, we need more people and you need to build like a, a culture of people wanting or at least being okay with New Hampshire leaving the union. And the easiest way to do that is where there's a bunch of people at. And where do people go? A farmer's market. So that's where we went. There's, you know, what, 100 people there or something like that? Yeah, there was like 100 people there. Maybe and, more? Um, no, I, I wouldn't say it was any more than 100. But, I mean, I, we had m- meaningful conversations with a lot of people, handed out uh, flyers left and right for uh, Foundation for New Hampshire Independence. Um and I just love using the idea that if Scott Lincoln vote for secession, why can't New Hampshire? Oh, yeah. You said that to uh, yes. literally everyone. Yes, because they looked at me like, what is this? And then they're like, they nodded like, but oh, because that just it. happened in the news. So Rob, they're like, oh. You don't tell them what's on the reading material or they won't keep the reading material. As soon as you said that to those old farts, they like didn't want the material anymore. Really? No, there's yeah, some no, people. There I had some conversations with multiple people about well, it. Well, but there were this group. There was these two old people that were there together, you know, buying your dad vegetables and they're just like you know looking at me like kind of funny when i gave it to them and i'm trying to get away and there you are behind me like if scotland can get for you why can't we and yeah I'm like i'm like oh we're I'm about to get to rel- oh look, look they're giving me not, the material back <laughs> that's a that's a pretty good rob impression right there. well first first off like i'm trying to talk to them as like a muggle okay it's like I can't, I can't go, I can't go full and cap on you know status about New Hampshire independence. Speaking of impressions of Rob, which Muppet did we decide Rob oh, was? Tonight? Yeah, we were trying to figure out which Muppet you were earlier. Why? Which Muppet are you? I mean, oh. he's the most manly Muppet, or is he a Muppet of a man? Oh man! But, no, that's Seth Cohen. Um, we decided that Joel was uh, the count. Yeah, well, just because he's count. foreign. Yeah, because uh, he's, <laughs> he's <laughs> yeah, and then and Shem is no, no, weaker. he's like half and, foreign. And we're having this argument. I think that Shire dude is Rolf, is the dog. Uh, and then uh, uh, who is it? Nick called me Grover. Grover. Which I yeah, I don't think you're a Grover. I, I think I, you're I, Rolf. I get a little Grovery sometimes. Um, whatever. Um, and I am definitely Miss Piggy. I'm a super, super, <laughs> super diva. So. No, I, I see that. Yeah. You are definitely Miss Piggy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that's too easy. That's, that is kind of too easy. Yeah. I'm a diva best believer. <laughs> you, you are very, um, how do I phrase this? You are very. Be nice. <laughs> <laughs> You're my friends. Be I, nice I will to be, me. I, I will say this. <laughs> Guys, these people know me better than any people in the whole world. You're that like, is why it's so you're, scary. You're like an enigma within the Liberty community in general. an enigma. Yeah, there is not a single person in this community that, has your personality or nope. nobody like nobody rumps like you do yeah you, uh, you out yeah. rump them all i'm always rumping <laughs> yeah um yeah it's it's fascinating because like I, I watched your trek up through the you know go, starting off you know from the behind the scenes god they were so nervous about me like i came in and like everybody at the free state project is like i don't know about this chick she's got a lot of energy and it's it, kind of exhausting <laughs> Yeah, you you kind of bounce off the walls a little. But you know, I think everybody kind of loves me now. So you can act That's very fine. extroverted in most of most of them people act? here. Yeah, I, I think it's yeah, not, no, not, not an act it's about not an that. Act. I'm introvert. an extrovert. You know, most most of the people here are introverted. Right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I don't act extroverted. I am. You just straight up are. I'm an ENTJ. Really? I'm an ENTJ. I'm I'm Steve Jobs. Hmm. You're Steve Jobs. I'm Steve Jobs. Are you just, what, are you doing like the Steve Jobs of objectivism or something? I'm Steve Jobs reincarnate. Oh wait, a few years off. Damn. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, you, you've come up through quite a bit, and now you've got like a pretty large following. Like how many how many people are on your Facebook page? Uh, objectivist Almost girl. Almost 1,900. Oh my gosh! <laughs> wow. I'm gonna be to 2,000 by my birthday. I that's my birthday. Your birthday that's gift to you. I, that's what I want for my birthday is to have 2,000 followers oh, for my birthday. We didn't even talk about your show. Oh yeah, oh. you have a show, right? Yeah. Or one of many? I don't know. What, you, you, what are you, you talking do something. about? I don't, I don't have know. a show. You're insane. She's got oh. shows, plural. <laughs> don't don't listen to her non believe <laughs> non fake show or whatnot. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I run Objectivist Girl. It's a um, you know little YouTube channel that I do teaching objectivist ethics. Oh. 
I was talking about your podcast, but go ahead about your YouTube channel. Well, um, yeah, I mean, um, I'm an anarcho-objectivist, and I know Rob had a question about that, like what that means. And we'll go into that in a little bit, but Okay, continue. all right. And then um, there's True Objective, my podcast that I do with Calvin Thompson at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on um, Monday nights, every Monday. And, oh, Ash is so cute. Oh, my God. Um, uh, do you, do you think working out with Calvin, by the way? Because that guy's he's smart as a whip. Oh, I know. He's amazing. I mean, he, he was really nervous. You could tell that um, he was really, really nervous at first, but he's really come out of his shell, and he's really loving it. And, um, he, God, he's just, oh, my God. Um, not, I mean, uh, you know, Car- I love Carlos. Like, I loved working with Carlos. Um, he, he was the previous co-host of yeah, that show. Yeah, Carlos Morales from mm-hmm. Truth Ever Comfort. And um, he was a great – you should have him on the show. He's he's awesome. Um, he's another anarcho-objectivist. He's actually the person that turned me into an anarcho-objectivist. Interesting. It's Carlos. How um, did he do that? Um, help me see the light of reason. <laughs> um, you know, uh, basically – I thought objectivists already did. Well, he gave me um, – no, they don't. Um, they do about ethics. I mean, her ethics are dead on. Um, so is her metaphysical and epistemological view, but she took those from Aristotle. But her ethics are dead on. She took quite a bit of that from Aristotle as well. Um, and um, she, but she got she got it wrong about politics. She she believes in separation of state and economics, which is good. So she got the economics part right. Um, she, I mean, I'm not going to go into aesthetics, but. Um, really it's that her politics are just inaccurate. And, and the problem is is that she actually makes one of the greatest cases for anarchism ever made, but she just wasn't aware she was making a case for anarchism. Um, and that's one of the things I talked about in my pork fast speech is um, she makes so many amazing arguments for anarchism and isn't aware of it. Gold Gulch is an anarchist community. Is that video out uh, yet? I thought that, wait, wait, I thought that place like. Yeah, I, I've got I, my. I, I thought that place idea. died like during the summer. Yeah, um, Gold Gulch. Gold Gulch. Didn't, didn't it like oh, die in, no. a, in a, no, no, a theory no. of real estate no, boondoggles? No, no, no. That's Gold Gulch, Chile, and that is not the real Gold Gulch. Gold Gulch, Gold Gulch are... is a mythical place in the book. Oh, yeah. oh, that—that's the one you're talking about. I thought you, you were talking about uh, Jeff let's Berwick's. Just, uh, let's just put it this way. Venture. Let's just put it this way: if Gold Scotch existed, the one in the book, you wouldn't know it existed. Why? Um, because um, they take the very best and brightest there, and I don't. I I like to think that we're coming up, like all of us. I like about like gonna get really big but we're not i wouldn't put us among the best and the brightest at this point well neither would i but nonetheless i don't hey i don't know about you guys but i'm definitely in that group it was secret i mean maybe you they (laughs) thought these people died i mean the people that were taken there they thought these people died they just disappeared to me that seems like cowardice why would you want to hide they don't want to hide so they want to live in a society Uh, where they're not being robbed from and they're not being you know um they're not being aggressed against. It's a complete anarchist society. So they take them from the society because they want to show the rest of society that they should appreciate the producers. Because without them, which they're showing them what happens without them, without them, the society will collapse. Well, I'm not against you know people like if they want to hide, hide. But for me, I didn't come here to hide. No, no. It's you not know. about hiding. Well, if no one knows it exists, it sounds like hiding to me. It's not. It's um, it's their choice. They want to escape from this society. I would not call it hiding. I think that... I, I think hiding is a coward word. And I don't think that that's what they were doing. Hmm. Me, personally, I've always said I'm a lot like Dagny Taggart. But I would never actually give up and go to the gulch. I, I care yeah. too much. I mean, maybe that's my flaw. I don't know. But it depends on the situation. If things got ba- so bad, I wouldn't care. Like, I'd still stay here. Nah. I don't care. I don't, see. For me, I I contemplated a lot about uh, leaving the, leaving the geographical location known as United States of America. I I would not be in this country right now if it wasn't for the Free State Project. 
If the FSP yeah, didn't, if the never, F, FSP did not exist, I'd be living in like Belize or Costa Rica or something like could that. Could you ever truly abandon these people? I mean, you love these people. These are your, these are, this is your family. I love, I love the Liberty people, the Liberty community. Yeah. Yeah, and there's so many of them waking up within this country. Then yeah, I don't. They I don't, need I, us here. I mean, oh sorry. But the I, average status and muggle, so I don't. I, I love all humanity, but like I really care about the liberty the, community. The thing is, is that they need us here. I mean, that isn't the reason that we should stay. We should do it for ourselves. But I mean, I think that we can actually create the kind of society that we would like to see um, by staying here. I truly believe that. Oh, so do I. That's why I'm here. Right. If I didn't believe that, I would not be living here. It's happening. I don't think there's a point at which we will get it will get so bad where we need to leave. I think if anything, it's getting better. Really? I do. You think it's getting better? I do. I mean, it doesn't seem that way from a governmental perspective because they're getting worse. But um, but from a society standpoint. People are waking up. People are thinking, and it is. We are just, we're coming out. There is a huge awakening online, though it, sometimes it's scary because sometimes I think they're going in the wrong direction of awakening. But for the most part, yes, the Internet has, I, I, for me, I'm not the same person I used to be. I don't think anyone sitting in this room right now would be who they were if it wasn't for the Internet. Um, like, would you? Would the three of us be sitting here? I would. You'd be sitting here still. Yes. I actually you, uh, found out about um, objectivism through a professor and uh, read all the books. But what about the... Physical books. So, no, I... Um, I. But, the, like, the FSP and stuff like that in, like, New Hampshire and... What, why did you... How did you originally end up here? That's probably well, a better question. Well, Matthew mentioned it to me, and we both signed the pledge. Oh, wait, no, he signed the pledge. He signed the pledge, and I was like, oh, I'll do it later, and then I never did it um, because I, I do that with a lot of stuff because alway- I've always been busy since since college. I've always been – no, since high school. Yeah, ever since I started swim team in sixth grade, I've been busy every day of my life. I don't really know what it's like to be like – to have like a bunch of free time, and so I guess that's why I took on three shows is because I like don't know how to be not busy, and I feel like pulling my hair out when I'm not. So – um you know, it's just, uh, you know, objectivist girl confessional. I can't not be busy. So, you know, put that on my resume. Oh, I, um, I hear you on not being uh, being hugely busy. Yeah, There's not a, a day I have off. He uh, he signed the pledge and told me about it. And I was, you know, half listening. And um, we watched um, we watched a show. Uh, I'm trying to remember what the name of it was. Was it about the? It was a documentary about the Free State. Was it Libertopia? It was not Libertopia. It was another one. There's another one. There's another one about the FSP. Yeah. I'm trying to think. There's Libertopia, and then there's obviously Derek J's victimless crimes. No. It, maybe it was Libertopia. Maybe I saw it. I don't know. Talking about the one um, where the guy that walked from like what Washington is he still here? I've never even met him. I've He's heard... still here. No, I okay. I don't. And it's um it's um oh um Will Anderson. Will Anderson is the guy that walked. Okay. You didn't know that? I forget his name. I remember yeah. watching the movie. You, you've never met Will? No, I never met. Oh him. My I still God. haven't met him. I don't. I haven't oh met Dave God. Ridley yet. I love Will. I have to introduce you both to Will. He's incredible. Yeah, oh have, my God. There's a lot. There's a few people left that I have not. He's yet probably met. one of the nicest people in the whole community. Really? Like, yeah, and that's saying a lot. There's well, a from, lot of really good. To people To be perfectly here. honest, like I'm still meeting new people. Yeah. yeah. You know, well, like you just I, every met week. Laurel. How is yeah. that possible? Honestly, I don't know. She's so pretty. Yeah. She is. And honestly, like sometimes there's people I meet where I'm like, why haven't we met like a long time ago? You know, I kind of travel the state a lot, and I go to different meetups around. So it's kind of interesting when I meet someone who has mutual friends all over the place, and I haven't met them yet. Oh, so I moved because of Carla Garricky's speech at uh, – is it Garricky or Garricky? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I always think Garricky I'm mispronouncing it. It's um, Garricky. <laughs> gotta say it. Garricky. Yeah, Garricky. Garricky. I just, I just, actually a Klingon last name. Okay. All yeah. right. Cool. Good to know. I thought, Not, I thought, I thought, I thought you had to pronounce African. it in Afrikaans. I guess. I guess. I guess. Uh, you know, African She's, Klingon. What's the difference? She's fluent in Afrikaans. Like this, yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> wow, that was awful. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, because of her speech, I actually signed up and moved. Which, so no, which, the which internet speech? had nothing to do with it. Which speech? Um, the speech she gave at the last, out, not the last Atlas Summit, but the one before that. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And I actually moved out here because I met George and started working on his campaign. So I actually didn't move out here for the Free State Project. But you I, got, it was you just got one sucked of those, in, though. Yeah. Um, I was going to hang out with you guys for like three months and then go home. And I remember the moment where I called Matthew and I was just like, I'm not coming home. <laughs> you know what's weird? And then she, I called my parents. She has more um, seniority than either one of us here. Wow. Think about that. that. She's been here for over a year. That's like. <laughs> August 1st, baby. That, that's like five years in Free Stater years. Yeah. That's yeah. a you long know? time. It's a long time. It is a long time. You know. And I, I, I only moved a couple of months before you. I just, yeah, I just got here in May, man. It's like not even that long Th- ago. Does it f- see for me that feels like it? That feels like a. I remember the day ago. you showed up, and I remember the day you showed up. You were so cute. Okay, so a little embarrassing Shire dude moment. No, you're adorable now. But he, wore, like, he showed up wearing an FSP shirt. He did. Yeah. So he was in an FSP shirt and he was upstairs on the balcony. And I remember walking up to my room because I live <laughs> upstairs from the Quill. And so I, you is, know. Is that still a, the Free State Project headquarters? Free State Project <laughs> headquarters. Free State Project headquarters. <laughs> yeah. um, here in New Hampshire. Anyway, so um, I walked upstairs and um, you'll see that in my earlier videos for those of you that didn't get that joke. Oh, if you do. So, w- w- what's the name of the one with... Um, with a alien with one. Jeff Pat, Jeff, oh, which was oh the name of that, where I made him dress up like an alien because yes. he was dating me at the time and like couldn't say no to That's me. That's my he favorite video of yours by far. <laughs> I love that video. I've watched he, it like five times. Yeah, yeah. no, he was like, "I want to do it. I want to do it. Let me do it. Let me do it. Let me do it." And then I was like, "Okay, fine." Wow. So, um, it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's so funny. He did a Monty Python esque. I told him like it needs to be Monty Python esque, and he's like, "Yeah, okay." So that's why the wrong thing comes from, and so you know, we thought that was very Monty Python on um so anyway the point is is that um oh that was jeff that was berwick um so anyway um the, the point was is i came upstairs and there is shire dude out yeah. on the balcony and he's like he's i'm like hi you're new and he's like are you objectivist girl uh no 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 <laughs> that's not how it happened no how did it happen I had, dude? I had heard of you i'd seen uh someone posted shrug uh, your song on facebook uh-huh. and so i had heard of you before as objectivist girl and uh but i didn't recognize that it was you immediately and then I realized that after the fact. In fact, I didn't. Th- I don't think I said anything about it until the next day when you drove me to Keene for my first Keene trip. Oh, okay. I think I mentioned it in so the clip. So you were oh, wait, just wait, wait, wait. You, you were just struck by my beauty. Was yeah, it? it was just your sheer. Wait, did beauty. you go to? Did you go? Oh. To, did you go to Keene like literally the next day you the were here? The second day I was here. So I did I. Just yeah. That's crazy. We both did that. We're the same person. That's that's bizarre. <laughs> See, I thought you were just starstruck. Apparently, you were just like no, already just in love awestruck, with me. Yeah. I caught it. Love struck, okay. if you will. All right. Yeah. We, we've had very similar first two days. Right. I didn't even know that. Yeah. That's that's uh, yeah. Interesting. You both met me like in your first two days. Yeah. It is it for the internet listeners at home? It is a it is a uh, trip to uh, meet Lauren Rumpler in person for the first time. <laughs> oh yeah. What is that? Um, I I. Rem- how, this should uh, be how, good. Oh, do you want me to do this personal story of you? My first, my first memory of you. Do you yeah. really, do you really want to know this? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Um, <laughs> so I go to the Quill. All right. Uh, Riaz and Joel take me to the Quill, and uh, you were you were uh, you were with Pedro at the time. I don't know. I'm, th- I'm assuming that. No. No, well, you were on no. his arm, so I'm assuming you were. No, and we're just really tight. I mean, Paige, I mean, he's like you guys. Like, we're just close. I don't know this story. Tell more. You know, any, <laughs> <laughs> any dark-haired, scruffy male, I immediately become insta friends with. So, like, we we go to like the bar, and we're and like they're pouring me a drink, like to say, hey, you know, celebrate my move, blah blah blah, and like you know, you come out like on his arm out there, and like I meet Pedro for the first time and meet you. And like you're you're you literally have your arm around his arm or something like that. He or he has his arm around you. So I don't know. He probably had his arm it, around it me. It was you, something like that. Yeah. And then you come up to me and like you you um you uh pet my beard. I did not. <laughs> yes, you did. You oh, went like no. you went like this oh, to no. my beard. How much did I have to drink? I don't know. <laughs> Um, but uh, and no. it was really weird because I was like, love scruffiness. I guess that I was do. my first experience into the world of Polly, where I'm like, oh, I'm okay. A, I'm a we- no. You were not witnessing Polly. How many times do you and I hug, or you know, like 
how many times do we like you i know, never met someone who was probably we're, we're, here. no 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 but that's just it like shire dude and i hang all over each other you and i hang all over each other we're just friends like I mean, like, you're my family. We're tight. I like, understand Pedro's that. Pedro's my family, and we're tight. I understand that. Pe- Pedro, I'm just saying this is the first experience no. that I had coming here was was you doing that. That no, was my first memory no. of you in the Shire. Oh, no. <laughs> no. What? Well, I mean, like, I just, I mean, that's my thing. Like, I, of course, petted your beard because I, I it is no <laughs> secret. It is and no now, secret. And now it's gone. There is no she uh yeah she she tends to play well with others you know there's there's no secret that Does the, she? that objectivist girls I think so I'm, I'll go ahead we're we're, we're having a private conversation yeah go, we're go, just go, let's, we're just talking go Hold ahead on. go ahead go uh, yeah ahead. okay talk about me that's nice <laughs> so um you know objectivist girls weaknesses are nerdy men and scruffy men oh, I love scruffiness I love mm. everything about it so of course I came up and petted your beard you were the new guy in town and you were scruffy and i'm like huh okay interesting so speaking of playing nice with others if i can if i can change the topic of course we talked uh, a lot online just so you know me and you yeah no yes i do and i remember you i i no we didn't talk that much and i remember you ignored like something i said and like for like a month before i moved I remember that. Hmm. I don't remember that. And then you apologized later on, like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't contact you." Oh yeah, I was I'm asking about busy. like what's going on in Manchester. Like, w- tell me what I need to know. Yeah, da, da, da. I was. Which people really do message busy. me. I don't know about you guys. I get people that message me from like asking for like tips and you know tricks and whatnot, like oh. where to go and what to do. Yeah, you I've, know. I've given people advice on like yeah. how to find housing and well, jobs. Yeah, I'll add them to different Facebook well, now, groups. Rob, and now I feel like guilty all over again. Wasn't there something you were gonna say, Shire dude? Oh no! Well, I was just gonna talk about playing nice with others and like when when oh, is yeah. our next when is our next like uh, collaborative video project? Because we haven't done anything together since uh, the dollar burning <sighs> video. Yeah, and uh, which he, by the way, hearts and minds. But Wait, when, I, when am I going to see the like, episode? I feel like we should release that to the public. Cause it's just uh, so cute and so funny, and then they can decide. Why don't we let them vote on whether oh, we do the man. show? Oh man, I don't know. That was originally why, why you were on the show as a guest. Is it like the was I was pimping out hearts and well, I which did also, didn't even happen. I did also pimp out Shire Dude. That is true. Yeah, that is very yeah. true. Yeah. But speaking of Shire, dude, can can we talk about I wasn't you for a second? On the show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Considering Lauren's here in the room, so this is going to be interesting. Oh Uh-oh. no. Um, oh no. no. <laughs> if you haven't watched the Shire you. Dude episode, Lauren's featured in it a lot. A lot. Yes. Um, every episode. It's my and the last episode theory. was like, I would say, two thirds of the episode was. <laughs> A remix, a remix version of Shrug. That was of Shrug. That was like a terrible drum and bass. Like it, really <laughs> it just bad. kept going. It did not end. Rob, it was way too long. Rob, don't be jealous. Oh, I'm that not he jealous. Loves me more than no, you. No, I, 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 be perfectly honest. I, I, I probably film half of his content. So he does. He does do a lot of my content. The, the tomato, <laughs> the tomato scene. <laughs> yes, that was filmed by Rob. That yeah. was definitely Rob. Yes, I remember that night. I had way too much to drink. <laughs> yeah, you did. But it was fun. <laughs> and I was like, Rob, turn on the camera. And you go, I don't think that's a good idea. And I go, Rob, turn yeah, it on. Yeah, you really wanted me to film that. I'm like, you tell me to turn on the camera. I'm not going to say no. So I'm like, of course I'm going to turn even, on the camera. You were even courteous and went, I don't know about this, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if I'm going to film, if, if you tell me, to, if you're drunk and you tell me to film, he's going to get gonna the content. Oh, yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> He's gonna That's get okay. it. That's okay. I've got some good video, some good video of last night. Any really like terrible like both he and Joelle yeah. were completely inebriated. Oh, and we were like sitting around singing a like a barbershop quartet of "He's a Bottom." <laughs> oh my god! You guys need to stop that with that. Is, I'm tired of that. That like, song is also featured in Shire Dude. I mean, we're trolling Joelle because like he does the you know the he's he's a bottom thing. I over actually, and over and over I actually again. made that song up. By the way, I don't he know. Did. On he the way to Porkfest, <laughs> and Joel like latched on to it like a leech no. and has not let go. <laughs> he hasn't. For, what he, four months now? He's not gonna. I, let I've go. gotten tired of it. I won't lie. I've kind of gotten tired of hearing it uh, a little bit. <laughs> Does he do it on the show? I don't think he's done no, it on this. He's done God. it on Shire Dude, but he hasn't done it on this show. Oh, yeah. well, yeah. that's... He's got to pay us for the advertising for us to perform that okay. on, on this show. All right. We can do a barbershop quartet version. <laughs> well, at any rate, 
can you explain your obsession with Whoa. with why you, oh. you she's obsession yes here's okay so i hang because out this with, is their best we're best friends i i hang out with the rump uh more than i'd say <laughs> most of the people in in the free state no, project I, I would agree mm. yeah i would agree yes yeah. yes so i mean she's just you know she's the one there she's she, you know so i film her i'm your one and she's also <sighs> You're my one. She's she's also <laughs> very entertaining to watch too. She is uh, she's very animated. <laughs> yeah, look at her go. <laughs> yeah, I'm just yeah. gonna have the camera on you for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you know, and she eats tomatoes like for the first time in ten years. That's a great. That's a great life event. <laughs> Did you put? Awesome. Can you please put that life event on your Facebook page? Because you know you could do like I life should. events. Should. Eight that would first be so tomato funny. in ten years. That'd be good. That'd be so funny. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Although, we, we can remember that night forever. I want to. I want to drive the point home though. That You'll we, have to give me the date on that. Yeah. On oh. That footage. Oh yeah. We'll have to find the date, the yeah. timestamp on that footage. Um, we we should do another collaboration though because that I think so too. That Efron burning video got thirty times your usual view count. I know, right? I went and calculated. I do it. have a new video coming out that I could really use your, um, you know, your personal touch on My editing magical skills. Yeah, you yeah. give me such good advice. Thanks. It's awesome. Did you see my Dao Te Ching video? Which one? My Dao De Ching. I did a video on the Dao De Ching. No, I haven't seen that one. Yeah, it was, um, I put in a waterfall. It was awesome. You put in a waterfall? Yeah, next to me. Why? Because it was peaceful. Because <laughs> <laughs> it chilled me out. Okay. Mother you know who I want, you know what I'd love to see? And I know he's talked about it because I, I don't have editing skills like at all. I should. But I really don't. Yeah, hmm. Rob, you should probably I get into get some I've videos. Been busy. I, I, I've been busy. Well, specialization of labor. There are plenty of yeah. uh, agorist editors. I, well, I don't want to pay people. I don't. Even, I'd rather do it myself. But I want to see. Adobe I want to see. Premiere. I want to see uh, Bo do a class. I'm calling him out, Bo. Oh yeah. Get the class going. Um, we, we all of us need more editing skill. You are the editor here in the Shire. Well, yeah, he spoke. He spoke with me about like a film and editing class. Yeah, he spoke with me too about yeah. it. Uh, you know, because I actually approached him like, "Well, I'm thinking about doing a class." Like, yeah. Well, then do it. I want. I, I will pay Bitcoin. Not that much though, but I'll pay I, something. I, I I toss in a bit. Uh, Speaking toss, of Bitcoin, I believe bit. Shire dude owes me some Bitcoin. Oh yeah, I do. I yeah, guess, he yeah. does. Do you, do you do you want a beer? I would love one, actually. Okay, let me get you a beer. Well, yeah, it, this is a, a, we're recording. <laughs> no, that's cool. No, go ahead, go yeah. ahead. We'll talk. We'll talk amongst yeah. ourselves. Go ahead and just grab a beer during the show. I mean, it's not like we're recording or yeah, anything no. like that. It's not like we're doing anything important. Yeah, I know. So, how are the ladies with you? What's going on with you? The ladies. Yeah. Um, th things are well. My, cool. I, I enjoy my love life. Yes, that's, that's nice. You know, one of my partners is right here yeah. enjoying our show. Though it doesn't oh, look like she's enjoying. Are you enjoying the show? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there we yeah, go. Okay. She's enjoying it. Uh, she would there tell you that even if she hated every moment of this, just so you know. No. no she yeah, that's what it. we do to get laid. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Rums rumping again. You didn't grab me a beer. <laughs> that's okay. I have coffee. <laughs> I, I, I'm good. I don't need any. <laughs> oh. Um, so, yeah. an, so, anywho, let's change subjects here. Yeah. I want to I wanna call out uh, some bullshit. Oh. What, what's an anarcho-objectivist? Uh, it's not bullshit, first of all. And it um, sounds made up. It is not made up. In fact, even if it was made up, it wasn't made up by me. So, um, yes, disclaimer, it is not my word. Everybody that thinks it's my word, it's not my word. Um, so, it is basically an objectivist that believes in Ayn Rand's metaphysics, epistemology, ethics, but not her politics politics yeah well i mean at Porkfest, i was i was there for your talk um and you you were using the word uh, pl uh pleonasm right it's a pleonasm yeah which, yeah it really is so you shouldn't have to say anarcho objectivist no i like, shouldn't have to but unfortunately because of all these minarcho objectivists <laughs> i have to actually specify this is why i stay away from labels this but, specific reason but but i'll tell you what i did just coin the phrase minarcho objectivist oh in fact i'm gonna start using that because <laughs> if if i've got to call myself an anarcho objectivist they've got to call themselves a minarcho objectivist that is so niche <laughs> I thought the FSP was a niche thing. That's like that's like niche of niche. Oh, there are so <laughs> many 
schisms in this movement. Man, isn't that kind of crazy? It's huge. It's I like, mean, you've got you've got um, uh, what is it? Um, there's the um, the Rebel Love Show. <laughs> that's <laughs> one. No, um, there's. There's the voluntarist, there's the anarchist, there's the objectivist. And between in the objectivist, there's um there's uh anarcho objectivist and minarcho objectivist. And the, I don't know if the voluntarists have any splits. Well, but the mm, But the anarchists of. are split between communism and capitalism. Yes, there's and caps and ancoms. And that's just right. so an, an anarcho communist, let's let's be honest, people. An anarcho communist is just a communist. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I mean, come on. It is. Communism means no government. No, I I was no well I would say this. I've met um the you know, the 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 alties, mm-hmm. if you you know the yeah. the alties in in the in the community who are very anarcho communist, but they're also very voluntarist, and they're like you know I'm I'm okay with collectives as long as they're voluntary. I mean, you can make the argument that the liberty community here is a very is is sort of a collective, uh, oh, have, but it's voluntary. Thin. Thick and thin. That's what I was trying to think. Of. Oh yeah, thick yeah, and thin libertarians. Thick and thin libertarians, and then there's the Cantwellians. <laughs> no, um, the, just say brutalist. Brutalist, whatever. Go. And then what is there? The gentlists? We're like the gentlists? Yeah. Like- yeah. One one lives at the CAC and one lives at the Brutalist house. What? <laughs> <laughs> that went. Oh, man. The, 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 the Keen. What, what? Am I wrong about that? Ian Freeman lives literally across the street from Chris Campbell. Is Ian Freeman a gentlist? Is he? I, I don't know. Say, he's, a, he's a super I would pacifist. Say Derek, I would say Peace Derek. be upon him. I would say Derek J is the leader of the uh, of the opposite movement. I would say if anybody, if Who also there's lives anybody, the anybody that is pushing um, peaceful libertarianism, it is Derek J. There is no guy that has coined peaceful libertarianism. He is one of the most peaceful people you've well, ever met. As is. long as you don't cross him, like if you, as long as you don't park in his parking spot. <laughs> oh, oh, and then and then, then you're fine. Yeah. And then there's the atheist libertarians and the Christian libertarians. And you no, know, by the way, the atheist movement in this community. I don't want to call off some shit. Um, oh, and the Buddhist libertarians. Don't forget that. I get upset with the atheists in the community. Sometimes they come across as very militant in their atheism. Well, they're yeah. mostly Daw- Dawkins followers. I mean, Dawkins is a militant well, atheist look, and pushes militant atheism, which is hilarious because look, he's a socialist. So if you're a follower of him, then... Obviously, living in, living in this community, at the end of the day, the NAP is literally a religious you know, edict here. So let's be honest. You know, you don't violate the nap, all right? And I don't see Christian libertarians and Christian anarchists vol- violating the nap. As long as they're not putting a gun to my head, as long as they're not doing anything to me, I don't care. I, I really don't care what they think between their mind as long as they're being peaceful to me. And that's all I can. That's all I care about, that they're, they're peaceful to other human beings and they're I peaceful agree. to me. I agree. And I'm, I'm with you on that. I'm not an objectivist that's like, oh, you have to be objectivist or you suck. It's just objectivism is a philosophy, and these are political movements. And I'm I'm talking about philosophy, and I think that more people should follow the objectivist philosophy because it leads to a lifestyle where you can run your own life and manage your own life for yourself. This is something you do for yourself. It's not something you do for me. It's not something you do for everyone else in your life. It's something that you do because you really want produ- – you want – reason you want productiveness and you want self-esteem and that's why you do it and those are her three virtues do you ever get tired of talking about objectivism (laughs) um no i'm i love objectivism i I know you do i know (laughs) you you talk Uh, about it in private like you still talk about some people think i'm a little ass because of it but (laughs) i i I, I think everyone's a little ass in this community Uh, everyone in this community you were Hmm. right yeah but yeah, no. I mean, I love objectivism, and I could talk. I, I talk about it all the time. I, I mean, no. I mean, I have moments where I'm just like, God, I don't want to talk about. It. But it's mainly because it's not challenging or new. It's these same stupid lifeboat arguments that I keep running into from people, and I'm like, that's a lifeboat argument. I'm not going to talk about it. It's a waste of my time. And you know, wait, what is a lifeboat argument? It's the idea. It's it's you know. Th- 
it's the idea that some random event that like will probably never happen happens and then what do you do in that si- what are the ethics in that situation it's like a super rare situation oh yeah like it i'm tied to the train of- tracks and you can push a button to like yeah. send the train the other way but it hits a baby yeah yeah those <laughs> okay but but it stems from the idea that you're on a lifeboat and you have one life preserver and neither of you can swim or you're in the middle of the ocean and it doesn't matter whether you can swim um, and the boat sinks, do you save yourself or do you save the other person? Hmm. And you save yourself. Sorry. But it's still a lifeboat situation. Not everyone would save themselves. Um, then you're not doing it right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, it depends on the person. Like, I would sacrifice myself if it was a big enough sacrifice. Ouch. Yeah, yeah. okay. Will you also sacrifice your freedom to everybody else, too? If, um, if the entire planet could be free, yeah, I would. That's Rob. We gotta have a very serious chat about this. If I could free the world by sacrificing myself, sure. I, I wouldn't. I'm I'm pretty sure everyone's got that special someone who they they'd give the life preserver to. Yeah. Um. There's a difference. So Ayn Rand talks about love, and um, you in her philosophy, you can value somebody so much that you wouldn't want to spend your life without them. I'm not buying it, but maybe that's because I just haven't been married or. Maybe I just haven't been in Don't. love before. Don't. <laughs> I I heard that. Yeah, I I hear that 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 adventure really you know kind of sucks. Hmm. Yeah, so. yeah. Don't get the state involved in your. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't life. think a piece of paper does anything. So I mean, I it mean, does the people that believe that that piece of paper does something. I guess it's being poly though. I just really don't like. <sighs> Would you ever get married and like uh, but still be polyamorous? Uh, if I were married, I would have to still be polyamorous. Well, welcome back, by the way. What do you mean, welcome <laughs> back? You left for a while. I, you know, this crazy guy just, I don't even know. I, j- I figured, you know, I figured I hadn't tried monogamy since I stopped being monogamous. And that was when I moved here. And, no, come to think of it, I was really polyamorous at home, too. But, um... So um, it's it's not about how many people you're with. It's about how you feel. And I w- I've always been polyamorous, but once you think about it. Um, even when I was with him, I was still polyamorous. I still mm-hmm. had love. I mean, you both know I still had love for you. I still still spent time with you. I mean, like, it's not. And a lot of people are like, oh, well, that's friends. And I'm like, no, it's more than that. Like, they you two are more than my friends. You're not just my friends. You're well, love that you love you can't confine to one person or one idea. That's, or, just, that's yeah. the thing is that as as a person that understands that there are two languages that the brain speaks. There's emotion and there's logic and reason. And to try and put emotion into language is to miss the point. I mean, you, you're missing this wide array of feelings when you say, I love you. When you say, you know, um, you're my friend or you're my lover or you're my boyfriend. You're missing all these wide arrays of feelings and emotions that you feel for every different person that you meet. And I think that people are confining themselves um, by not being polyamorous. But, I mean, that's their life decision. But I think, honestly, it's brought so much more joy to my life. And going back to monogamy for that month – was just horrifying. Yeah, I mean, you seemed a little depressed during it. I was really upset. Like, it was very confining. I didn't feel like he liked me for who I was. It was very, um, just don't do it. Don't ever. And, you know, and it was it was voluntary. I thought that maybe, maybe I jumped into the polyamory thing too quickly. And maybe, you know, now that I'd been polyamorous for a while, maybe, maybe I could be happy being monogamous, you know. And I wasn't. I wasn't. I mean, it's like trying to tell a straight person to be, or a gay person to be straight, or even a straight person to be gay. Yeah, just, I, I, I can, I, I can never go back either. I can't. It's too hard. I have to say, it's uh, like for me, like it's I, too restrictive. I don't I like to be owned. It's not like I like shout at the rooftops or something like that. No, but I'm like open about it. You know, like it's kind of interesting. Like at work, um, you know, because I work at, you know, I go into. You guys don't. Well, you do, but like. We we work you know corporate jobs so to yeah. speak you know <laughs> we're not sucks. our muggle jobs our muggle jobs muggle jobs among I don't the have mug- a muggle job. among the muggles sometimes I think it's 
more inappropriate to be openly out of the closet poly than is to be out of the closet gay at this oh, point. Yeah, you were talking about this on Facebook. Yeah, and oh like, yeah, it's worse. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they get really upset. So like, I don't talk about like my activism or much like that because I manage people. So it's like I don't want them to, like to think if they disagree with me on something that I'm gonna like fire them or something like that. But um, yeah, like, you know, when it comes to love life and stuff like that, you know, like last like, how was your weekend? What did you do? I talk about what I did, mm. you know, and obviously it comes up in conversation. Normally includes both your girlfriends, right? Yeah. So I mean, that's the thing is that um, how how censored is your show? No, um, is it? it's not really. Okay, I mean, so well, I mean, we don't. I, I try not to name drop. Uh, no, 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 no. I usually I'm not going to name drop. So yeah. they're like, they're like, so you're seeing more than one guy. So you're a slut. Yeah, and I've I'm been like, called a slut by a few people. I'm like, what is wrong with you? Like, you're, like, the most judgy person. Like, what's – you've got to have something wrong with your life to be sitting around judging me. You know, when I put up my relationship status back when um, I was dating Matt, and everybody knows I was dating Matt, who's friends with me on Facebook or knows me. Um, back when I was dating Matt, I put up an open relationship status. And I kid you not, people had a debate – on my relationship status. <laughs> they had a freaking debate. And I told them the next person that says anything on this status other than congratulations, I'm going to unfriend you. Wow. I don't even care. Like, get off my Facebook. Facebook needs to add a thing. I couldn't believe how impolite and disrespectful that fa- was. Fa- I was so upset. Facebook is not very poly-friendly when it comes to relationship no. status on there. No, open relationships. Yeah, I that's hate it. That's open all they relationships. Have. Yeah. You know, I, I, don't, I don't subscribe to that. The idea of open relationships normally means that you can oh. sleep around, and I, I don't sleep around. I sleep with people that I have a good connection with and that i really really care about if not love yeah exactly yeah no i i 100 percent agree with that's, that uh, it's just, yeah, yeah when it's i exhausting when i first heard about polly back at uh libertopia in san diego um they they made that distinction like right away like during the panel um they're like yeah it, this is not like swingers this is something completely different this is libertopia you said yeah yeah libertopia they had a did polyamory you, did you come bit. to my polyamory panel podcast? yeah 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 i was yeah. there i didn't get to see that one you, i kind of wish i had hoping, gone watch the scene it yeah well you weren't polyamorous at the time yes, you I were, was. oh okay i've been, yeah, I've yeah, been yeah, practicing you're right, you're this right. for like six months now i remember because i remember when i i told you about it you were just like <laughs> What no, I was very anti poly when I moved here. I was like, you're I was, I was very anti before I moved here. Yeah, yeah but I mean, this place changes. I remember you. that. I remember meeting you at Liberty Forum, and you were ragging on poly people like so much. Yeah, and, and then when, you, and then, and then and then when, when I come you, back, <laughs> I'm sure my name came came up in that because I talked to him about it so many times. Yeah, uh, and then the, the day you moved back, I, I had completely switched. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty funny. Yeah, it was actually kind of <laughs> funny. Yeah, it's okay. Me too. I like went through this period where I was trying polyamory, and I'm like, this is so dumb. I don't even know. I'm like, why can't we just be together? Like, why do you need to see these other people? And like after a while, it just kind of clicked. Speaking of, are you are you poly? I, I, I've never really I asked this question of you. I, I'm, I'm not, he doesn't oh, use labels. Oh, that's right. You don't do labels. I don't which, means, use label. which means he's not a libertarian. I'm not an anarchist, as I've been he's called. He's not an anarchist. I'm not white. I'm not um, poly. I'm not a lot of things. <laughs> I think he's pansexual. I don't. Uh, whoa. Oh. But that's, that's, that's what I think. Wow. Wow. I've never been called that before. That's a new one. Yeah. You have never heard that? It's somebody that doesn't recognize sexes at all. Like, I think that you're just like, like that type of person. I know that you're a girl. I don't, I don't understand <laughs> that. <laughs> no, it's just like. You don't judge people based on, like, sex or gender. You don't judge people. Um, We're all just people, man. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's, like, how I picture you. I can you. totally understand that. Yeah. Now. I'm, that's, that's, that's you. Like, that's what I think you. Here we are. Self-actualization <laughs> on the Rebel Love Show. There we yeah. go. We, we figured out the truth. The, the true objective Shire of uh, Shider Dude. He's just a pansexual imp prancing around the free yeah. state. <laughs> yeah. You are. Oh my God, uh, that's. Uh, but we love you for it. Okay. And you're amazing. Yeah, yeah, you, uh, you're, you've been a great move since you uh, got oh, here. Thank yeah. you, buddy. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, you, you've added. Uh, what's, what's what I'm looking for? You've added art to the community. 
trying to bring it. Trying to yeah, bring you culture. know, hey, I called you out as, uh, or did you call yourself out? I don't know. I was rolling with it for a while that you were the, the uh, Garrett Ian <laughs> of Manchester. Where you've blown him out of the water oh, at this point. Oh, no. I still got a long ways to go. Like, he's got... He's got his show uh, regularly on, on, on public access why, TV. Why don't, why don't you have that on public? I, we need to get this show on public access. That would be fantastic. I, know, yeah, I, I have I, no I, idea Ian why this rags, is not live. He ragged me on Free Talk Live within the first 30 seconds of introducing me. Like, oh, is it on public access? I'm like, yeah. Ian, like, the, not the time on like 150 radio stations to rag me about not doing Like, he, That's one thing he does. is He uh, he pushes the envelope. He pushes the envelope. No, and I I, 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 I applaud him for it because, you know, he goes, oh, so what's going on? What, what, why haven't you done this yet? Yeah, yeah. I've been lazy. What do you think about Objectivist Girl on public access TV? Oh, True objective on there. Oh, <laughs> my God, no. Objectivist Girl. Is, is Can true? I please have like a two-hour show? <laughs> is your podcast uh, recorded via video? Um, No. Why not? I, because oh, are you really gonna try and turn this on me? <laughs> I got, I got, I now? got like two See, minutes to is, kill on this podcast. This is, so yes, I am. This is Rob's thing right here. He like, if you pull, if you pick on him for something, he no, will turn no, no, to you. No. He will turn to you and be like, "Hey, you're doing this thing wrong. Like, why are you not doing this thing?" No, no I, I, I'm just, I'm just trying to do what other people have done both. to me, and I'm trying to help you out. You should be on YouTube. I'm trying with your show, but the problem is, and I did get, a, I did get, you, I did convince you to get on Stitcher and iTunes. By the way, I know we're, there's a lot of problems. I'm not going to go into that, but I'll tell you what. I want to like tell you like how much I appreciate being invited on the show and how much fun I've had and how much I love both of you. And I'm glad that you guys both moved. And it's great to have you here. And you're my best friends in the whole world. And Oh. I love you guys so so much. Like words can't express. I think oh. Lauren's pansexual. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Well, we love you too. I am. All right. Well, uh, well, where can they? Where can the internet? And inter- a sexist. <laughs> <laughs> so, where can the internet at large find the the Lauren Rumpler at? Uh, so you can find me on YouTube at Objectivist Girl without the I, or you can find me on Facebook at Objectivist Girl. Um, you can also find me on the True Objective podcast at 8 p.m. on Mondays, um, every Monday, Eastern Standard Time, of course. Which should and, be on YouTube. And uh, Don't you own should be on YouTube. Your- well, we're working on it. And then there's the Objectivist Girl live show on the Voluntary Virtues Network at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Friday. Wow. We air at 9 o'clock on Voluntary Virtues on Sundays, FYI. And we're at... Eight o'clock on Tuesdays on J Rev. I never actually labeled what time we're actually on. There. Yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I just say we're on those networks. I never actually said what time we actually air. What about you, Andrew? Where can uh, oh yeah can we find you at shiredude.com. Yeah, you keep it nice and simple. Nice just and simple. Shiredude.com. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. Can get to, you can get to everything I do through that one website. Yeah, I just do a lot. <laughs> okay. Um, you can find. I actually have uh, my content. Everything I do is at vrebel.com. But obviously, the show. RebelLoveShow.com, like us on Facebook. Uh, we don't have a Twitter, but we all have our own Twitters. I never really see one. Mine's Voluntary Rebel, but... Mine's Real Shire, dude. Are you on Twitter? I hate Twitter. <laughs> I will not tweet. I'm just not, I'm not down with the twits. It's yeah. a great, I'm sorry. It's a great way to call out celebrities and, and stuff. You know, you know, it's a great thing that they called it Twitter because I call it twi- um, twi- mm, Twitzers. 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 Yeah, that's not going to catch on it's, unless you go on Twitter. <laughs> it's 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 I I just don't like the twits. I'm just okay. not into it. It's not my thing. Well, anyways, you can find us all. You can find all the show content at rebelloveshow dot com and go like us on Facebook. Download us on iTunes and Stitcher and uh, maybe watch us on Voluntary Virtues or listen to J Rev for a chance. I don't know. But anyways, uh, we are out. So uh, peace, peace, peace. <laughs>